Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we're going to make a whole bunch of small polycarbonate parts. Being a custom fabrication shop, we do a lot of work across a whole bunch of different materials. Uh, but one that's sort of unique in that aspect for strength and visibility is polycarbonate. Here's a scrap piece of polycarbonate that you'll see later on in the video why it became a scrap. And you can see that this is where it came from. Here. There we go. So the reason polycarbonate is really cool is that if you take the masking off, obviously the masking removes the, the scraggly uh, polycarbonate cover over it. Hang on a second. Just very, very fine. It'll come off. This is why this job is really nice if you have nails. You tend to use a lot, use them a lot. So here's the polycarbonate, and quite literally, it's totally optically clear. Generally, what we do with this is uh, small medical parts, and because we have a fiber laser and a, and a CO2 in the same machine, uh, the CO2 can actually cut out the parts, and the fiber can actually uh, put specialized serial numbers on there permanently without the use of ink. So basically what happens is you end up with a very, very clear part with branding that never comes off. Now for this project here, I decided to use a CNC router. And the reason for that is because the parts were extremely small. The issue with polycarbonate is that it likes to hold on to heat, just like steel does uh, when we laser cut it. And as a result, because it's plastic, it actually starts to warp. Because these pieces are so small, the issue we end up having is that, you know, this is for a CNC router, and you can see how there's a bit of a space in between to account for the movement of the material. But with the laser, I don't need to do that. The parts will be extremely small, and have basically a one eighth all the way around here. And they just, it just starts to buckle on you, and as soon as it starts doing that, the specs that our customer wants us to cut these out from just go out of whack and there's no real way to fix it. Now on the edge here you can see this was laser cut, it was other parts that we did. And you can see the edge quality, if I get the focus working, is like a black sandpaper sort of touch. While the one done with the CNC router, this is a scrap piece, this was a little bit rough, is not optically clear but it's like a sanded sort of clear. Another option for polycarbonate, of course, is water jet. Now every, every tool has a plus and a minus. So the laser uh, really uses all the material because we don't have to account for material moving. The problem with that is the heat. With the router, we end up using a lot more material for the parts, but at least we don't have the heat issue. Though there is a bit of a cleanup because we have to remove the tabs because it's a contact method. Uh, with a water jet, again, you end up with tabs that you have to sand uh, the only issue with that is the water shoots down and sometimes it comes back up. And if you have a large sheet, the sheet actually starts to vibrate on you. Uh, so again, each machine has a plus and a minus. There is no perfect machine. So let's take a look at our CNC router cutting out a couple parts. As mentioned previously, you notice that there's tabs here, and the reason I have tabs for whenever I do water jet or uh, router work is because it's a contact method. With the water jet, you have water shooting down and water shooting back up. It's not as much pressure, but it just tends to lift things sometimes with the sand, and that's why you need tabs to keep everything from moving. With the router, it's a different method because you have a bit like this pushing and pulling through the material. It's still uh, cutting the material, but it's still a, a contact method. While with a laser, there's absolutely no contact, and 99 times out of 100, I uh, don't need any tabs whatsoever uh, to, for, to cut stuff. Now, I pause the video here because what I want you to notice is that it's not on this part here. Let me see. There it is. What I tried to do is be more efficient because you can see here I'm basically wasting half the material. So I decided, well, let's make it a little bit smaller. 
So you can see here, the problem is polycarbonate is incredibly strong, but it can't take any lateral force when it's very thin. And as a result, what you'll see now is sort of like a funny video of the router literally spitting out parts all over the place. And that's why whenever I do what you just saw was this, and these worked fine. So I thought, okay, I'll give myself, uh, you know, I'll use more material uh, more efficiently. And this was the result here. <laughs> Just visually, you can see right away that these parts are within this, the spec that we needed to produce them in. And it's 0 0.06 uh, inch thick polycarbonate, or roughly uh, 1.6, 1.7 uh, millimeters thick. And you can see here how these ones were within spec. And it was these ones here that just started falling apart and were totally out of spec. Now it's very easy to notice that they're out of spec. I kept a couple of the pieces. So what ends up happening is as soon as they, they're allowed to move a little bit, you end up with this kind of stuff here, where basically the corners or the edges end up just flying into the router and getting a little bit ripped off of them uh, on the edges. So these ones were not to spec. So after I learned uh, that lesson, what you decided to do, which I think it was, yeah, it goes this way here. So you can see the top ones were completely out of spec from there. So then I made adjustments to the routering and the next run was totally perfect. I gave myself the room that I had here, just a little bit more, just in case, because I had even smaller parts here. Now there is a lot of wasted material when it comes to CNC routering, and there's no way around it, because you need to hold the material down for one thing. So you need something that could hold the edges. In this case here, I use screws, but it could be whatever you want to uh, end up using. Uh, and so you have to have a little bit of clear material on the generally around it, and you also have to have room in between because otherwise this is what happens. For this project here, the customer obviously does not want these tabs on all of their stuff. 
So the quickest method to solve that problem when it comes to polycarbonate is just to sand them off. There's a few ways of doing it. One is just to manually go like this, but I had about 50 or so uh, small polycarbonate parts. So I just thought it was more efficient to use the, uh, the sander to remove it. Now I have to be very careful because it is very thin plastic. It is bulletproof glass, but it's still plastic. And as a result, if I push a little bit too much, these things go right out of spec. The nice thing about tabs is that they're so thin, at least when I made these ones here, that when you push it into the sand belt, um, it right away takes off the tab. And as soon as you feel a little bit of pressure, right away you know that you're sanding exactly what you don't want to be sanding and the tab is gone. posted videos about uh, cutting polycarbonate with the CNC router was actually quarter inch polycarbonate and the reason I ended up using the router for that is because of the thickness again with the laser the polycarbonate just holds on to the heat and the thicker the polycarbonate the more heat builds up and the more warping you end up having and again router is the perfect solution to that uh, the only other issue is with uh, polycarbonate is that you have a protective film on both sides at least from our supplier. And sometimes what happens with the water jet is that it goes through, but then some of the sand just gets a little bit under that. And what happens is that you end up with like a, like a frosty, quick little line. You get that with metals and other stuff too. So that's why I went with the router over the water jet for this project here. Not just the vibration, but also the cleanup because tabs are a bit of a pain to have, but it's the best solution to do this project at the spec that the customer wanted. So if you have custom polycarbonate parts or literally anything else that you want made, contact me at cncroi.com.